Hey guys, I want to give you a progress update on my bat cave today. If you don't know what this series is about, I suggest checking out my first video in the card above where you'll be able to get all information about my bat cave project. Since my last video, I've made pretty significant progress. Just like before, everything in this cave is still a work in progress. Starting with the right side, there hasn't been that much change here, but I did decide to remove the vault that stored Batman's kryptonite. I felt like it just took up way too much space, and also it didn't allow me to fully enclose this build with rock formation. Some of you spoke against, including the shrunken candor in the Batcave, so I removed it. Let's zoom out for a moment so I can talk about how I plan on enclosing this entire model. This entire build felt too open and exposed, so I sought to rectify this by adding more rock formation around the perimeter, as well as building up the cave's walls. I just wanted to make the cave feel more complete. The idea is that this is basically a cross-section view of what you see inside the cave. Imagine, if you will, that this entire section was removed. The biggest question I had in my mind as I, I was building this in LDD was how the heck am I going to get all these big ugly rock pieces? Hopefully I'll be able to source all of them through Bricklink, but we'll see. Anyways, we took a small detour so let's get back. Underneath the armory area, I added a gym slash training area for Batman to train and be able to keep himself in tip top shape. We have a bench press in the corner, a rack with dumbbells beside it. Then we have a punching bag on the other side and a speed bag next to it. This is a training dummy and a shelf with some just some knickknacks, maybe some protein powder or whatnot. And here we have Dave, also known as Digitally Advanced Villain Emulator. Normally, Bruce would keep Dave in his trophy room, but he decided to repurpose it into a training bot. Dave is able to emulate the fighting ability of all of Batman's villains. This allows Batman to train to be able to predict and counter his opponent's attacks. Dave is activated by stepping into the caution warning area. And there are some cabins here to store other training and miscellany equipment. I've already covered the Jason Memorial and Batsuit display area in the previous video, and also there hasn't been much changed here. If you do remember from the last video, I had a bunch of staircases that led to the bottom floor. I felt like there were just too many staircases and everything was going to the first level, which didn't really make sense since I didn't have anything down there. <laughs> so I removed some of those staircases and built up this entire area to be a second floor instead. The idea here is that this entire section is built like an elevated platform right above the water and you'll be able to see the water after I lay out all the plate pieces. I have a few bridges that link it to different sections. After crossing the first bridge and getting onto the first platform area, Batman will be able to get immediate access to either the Bat computer or the Batmobile. I then have two bridges that link that platform area to a lab section. I really wanted to flush out this area with lots of details. So if you guys can give me some ideas on what to include in the lab, it will be much appreciated. So far I have a beaker that contains some kind of chemicals, as well as containers and a microscope. This is supposed to be a tank that can be used to provide gas into this container for testing and experimentation. I just have a swivel chair here and some storage areas as well as drawers underneath. There's a similar setup across from it, just in a smaller configuration. I really need some ideas to add stuff onto the counter. So please share with me some ideas. Further down here, I built up a shelving slash kind of cabinet area that currently stores a bunch of chemicals and containers. I'll probably add some books onto here too. Across from there, there's just a desk with a few computers for processing lab tests and results. Everything in the cave is networked, so any data processing that happens in the lab can be accessed from the main back computer. Speaking of back computer, it's 
just a few minifigure steps away. The platform and computers are unchanged, but I did make a small change to the chair. I want to build it up so it would be super imposing. So I made it larger and added a bit more detail. Quite a bit of effort had been put into this section of the rock formation of overhang. In my previous video, I stated that I want to really embed the computers and platform into the rock and I felt like it turned out pretty well, but let me know what you think. I also added overhead lighting since Bruce spends a lot of time here. Before getting into the changes in the trophy room, let's take a few minifigure steps back here to the newly added Batmobile turntable. As you can see, it is also raised to the same elevation as the platforms. The platform for the turntable itself is built exactly like the Bat Computer platform. The Batmobile is able to be driven straight out of the Bat Cave now by going along this path and up towards the blast doors. I still need to add some more rock detail along this path, but I'm really digging the look of the blast doors. I like the fact that it actually looks like it's built straight into the rock. I've also added this elevator shaft that can be accessed from the lab by crossing this bridge. This elevator allows Bruce to get up to this very high platform up here right above the bat computer. Don't mind the whirly bat, it's just there as a placeholder. I was planning to use this as a platform for Bruce's bat wing, but I'm starting to reconsider that. I was also considering building a blast door against this side for the ingress and egress of the Batwing, but let me know what you think, if that's a good idea. The trophy room hasn't gone through that significant of a change. I've removed the giant Riddler hourglass just because the parts will end up being just too difficult to source. Though I still wouldn't mind doing a tutorial on it if you guys are interested. In its place, I added a display area for Thomas Wayne's Batman costume. I've also added Thomas Wynn's letter that he wrote to Bruce from Flashpoint in this little glass display area. Against the wall, I just moved things around mostly. However, I did add Mr. Freeze's original gun, Deathstroke's sword, and the Joker's playing card to this collection. Within this substructure, I've added the vampire monk's and Red Hood's costume. I've also included the Mad Hatter's hat and Two Face's coin. I still have placeholders here for additional costumes. I could probably include even more costumes and items on the other side since I removed the staircase back there. So tell me guys, what else should I include? As you can see, I still have a bunch of rock work to do still. Most of the cost of this build will probably go towards all the dark bluish gray pieces for the rock work. And overall, I'm pretty happy with this layout. I'm still a bit unsure on what to do with the platform up here, but I think for the most part, I'll be filling in the model with details and beautifying it at this point. Is this update an improvement or a step back? What do you want to see included or removed from this build? Please share your thoughts with me and other viewers in the comments below. And until next time, bye!